Kyung Tak stood on the rocky shore, her small hands gripping the edge of her sun-faded dress. The sea stretched out before her, its waves whispering secrets of distant lands. But today, the sea carried something different, a tide of people, their faces etched with weariness and hope. The year was 1953, and the Korean War had torn families apart, leaving scars more profound than the ocean itself. Kyung's village nestled near the coast, where the salty breeze carried echoes of gunfire and the cries of those displaced by conflict. As the sun dipped low, casting a golden net across the water, Kyung noticed figures emerging from the mist. Refugees, their eyes held stories of lost homes, shattered dreams, and the ache of leaving loved ones behind. They trudged forward, their tired feet sinking into the sand. Kyung's heart raced. She had heard tales of war whispered by elders around the fire, but this was different. These were real people, their lives upended by forces beyond their control. She wondered if they carried memories like fragile seashells, fragile yet resilient. Among the weary travelers, Kyung spotted a girl about her age. Her eyes were wide, like a startled deer's, and her clothes hung loosely on her thin frame. Kyung approached, her bare feet sinking into the damp sand. Hello, Kyung said, her voice tentative. I'm Kyung Tak. The girl blinked, her gaze shifting from Kyung to the sea. I'm Ji Yan, she replied, her accent foreign but familiar. I come from a village far from here. Kyung's nervousness melted away. Ji Yan's smile was like a sunbeam breaking through storm clouds. They sat side by side, their legs dangling over the cliff's edge. The sea roared below, its waves crashing against the rocks. Tell me about your home, Kyung urged. What was it like? Ji Yan's eyes softened. We had cherry blossoms, she said. In spring, they painted our village in pink. And my grandmother, we would sit by the fire and she'd tell stories of dragons and heroes. Kyung listened, her imagination weaving cherry blossoms and mythical creatures. She shared stories of her own, a mischievous cat that prowled the rooftops and the taste of seaweed soup cooked by her mother. Ji Yan's face grew serious as the sun dipped lower, casting long shadows. I miss my family, she confessed. My little brother, he loved chasing fireflies. Kyung understood. She missed her father, who had gone to fight in the war and never returned. The sea seemed to hold their secrets, the ones they couldn't share with anyone else. Maybe, Kyung said softly, we can find fireflies here too, even in a new place. Ji Yan's eyes brightened. Yes, she whispered, maybe. And so as the stars emerged, Kyung and Ji Yan sat on the cliff, their fingers entwined. They watched the sea, its vastness both terrifying and comforting. Together, they imagined fireflies dancing on the water, their tiny lights guiding lost souls home. The author's note in the book spoke of Wang's mother, who had fled her village during the war, carrying memories like fragile seashells. The illustrator's note reflected Cha's grandmother, who had painted cherry blossoms in her heart, even amidst chaos. And so, in the house by the sea, Kyung and Ji Yan forged a friendship, a beacon of compassion in a world torn apart. Their laughter echoed across the waves, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. The book promised breathtaking visuals, but it was the warmth of connection, the fragile yet unyielding bond between the two girls that left an indelible mark on Kyung's heart, a house that would never fall into the sea.